Hi, my name is Boon Lim. I'm a consultant cardiologist and an electrophysiologist, and I practice at Hammersmith Hospital and in West Middlesex Hospital in London. Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm abnormality. Atrial fibrillation presents with symptoms such as palpitations, lightheadedness, a feeling of shortness of breath, and may present with swelling of the ankles as well. So in the normal cardiac contraction, the pacemaker cells that all of us have are, uh, start to fire off a, an electrical impulse, which starts off in the right atrium. This electrical impulse then conducts down to the AV node, which is akin to a relay station, before sending the impulses down into the ventricles, which start contracting. In a normal heartbeat, this process is repeated regularly and can happen approximately 100,000 times in a 24-hour period. In atrial fibrillation, the normal pacemaker doesn't work in the usual way, and instead what happens is that very abnormal areas of the heart, typically within the pulmonary veins, start to fire off with multiple uh, repeated uh, rapid activity, and these are called ectopic beats and when they occur in very rapid succession, the conduction in the atria, in both the left and the right atria, become very irregular, and the impulses that are then received at the AV nodal level conduct down to the pumping chambers of the heart and cause the irregularly irregular activity that characterizes atrial fibrillation. So the most important treatment strategy to consider if you are diagnosed with atrial fibrillation is stroke prevention. Now, the left atrial appendage, which is this structure that sits in front of the left atrium, is an area that can harbor thrombus, material that is made out of blood or coagulated blood, which stays in this area, the appendage, until such time the thrombus may flick off into the pumping chamber of the heart, called the left ventricle. If this clot or thrombus then transmits into the brain and clots off or blocks off a, an artery into the brain, you get a stroke, which is one of the most devastating complications of atrial fibrillation. When we see a patient with atrial fibrillation, we immediately assess the risk of stroke for a patient. And if appropriate, we would ad advise that a patient is started on blood thinning drugs in order to dissolve or prevent any clots from forming to prevent a risk of stroke. The next treatment option your doctor might want to discuss with you is drug therapy. Drug therapy is normally started in atrial fibrillation to slow heart rates down. In atrial fibrillation, one of the major issues is not only the irregular heartbeat, but how rapidly your heart beats, which causes numerous symptoms, including shortness of breath. Now, the drugs that are started to control your rate normally take two or three days uh, for you to start to feel a difference. And if you don't feel sufficient difference or if the heart rate cannot be controlled with one agent, the options are to start a second agent or indeed to increase the dose of the first one so that the heart rate control can be improved. This is something that has to be ongoing with your doctor. The second form of therapy that your doctor might want to prescribe are drugs that control the rhythm of atrial fibrillation. That is to say, these are drugs which are given specifically to try and cardiovert you, which means to restore normal rhythm from your current rhythm, which is atrial fibrillation. These drugs are drugs such as flaconide or amiodarone and are given in a specific way to try and help restore normal rhythm. One of the other treatment options uh, that could be used is a cardioversion. This is an electrical current which is passed through your chest wall in order to stop and restart the heart. A cardioversion might be suggested by your doctor if you have very highly symptomatic atrial fibrillation or indeed if the drugs that have been given don't appear to have improved your symptom profile. One other treatment strategy that a cardiologist could help you with is a catheter ablation strategy. 
This is normally conducted in a cardiology catheter laboratory in a major tertiary cardiac center with cath lab capacity. In atrial fibrillation ablation, what happens is that a catheter is passed through the femoral vein in your groin, and this catheter is then placed into the right atrium. A small hole is created between the right and left atrium, and a transeptal puncture is performed, which creates a small hole to gain access to the left atrium. Once in the left atrium, the mainstay of treatment is to draw a circumferential ring of ablation around the pulmonary veins to isolate these veins electrically, such that any activity coming from within the veins which trigger atrial fibrillation will be silenced and can no longer conduct into the body of the atria. This is called a catheter ablation strategy. The idea of an ablation procedure is to electrically isolate those pulmonary veins from which there can exist areas of ectopic activity, rapid activity that conducts out into the body of the atria. So this can be done with either heating or freezing to destroy the areas around the pulmonary veins such that any activity that arises from within the veins can no longer conduct out to the rest of the body of the atria to cause atrial fibrillation.